welcome back to Literary Music Series. I'm Natalie, I'm your founder, and today we're coming to you all the way from London with pianist James Carabino. His episode is entitled Cradle Song, and it features Rachmaninoff's transcription of Tchaikovsky's Lullaby, Opus 16, Number 1, and poetry by Apollon Maikov. Enjoy. Sleep, my baby, sleep. Fall asleep, sleep, fall asleep. Beckon sweet dreams to yourself. I have hired as nannies for you the wind, the sun, and the eagle. The eagle has flown back home. The sun has hidden under the waters. And, three nights later, the wind is rushing away to her mother. The wind's mother has been asking, Where have you been for so long? Have you been fighting the stars? Have you been chasing the waves? I have not been chasing the sea waves. I have not been touching the golden stars. I have been guarding a baby and rocking gently his little cradle. Sleep, my baby, sleep. Fall asleep. Sleep, fall asleep. Beckon sweet dreams to yourself. I have hired as nannies for you the wind, the sun, and the eagle. I just recited the English translation of a poem by Russian poet Apollon Makov, who lived from 1821 to 1897. Apollon Makov made a name for himself by traveling around Europe, picking up folk songs from various different cultures and translating them into Russian, creating an oeuvre of poetry based around these eclectic folk songs. So this poem, entitled Cradle Song, is the first poem in a set called Songs of Modern Greece. Indeed, Apollon Makov spent a significant amount of time in the Greek archipelago, and there are clear influences of ancient Hellenic themes in his work during this time. And here you can see this with the depictions of nature in particular. With the personification of nature, this really comes through. The reason I've recited this poem is because it links in with a piece I'm going to play for you in a moment. I'm about to play for you Ser Sergei Rachmaninoff's arrangement of a song by Pyotr Ilyich Tchaikovsky which set the original Russian text of this poem by Apollon Makov. So in the winter of 1872 to 1873, Tchaikovsky wrote his, well, he, he wrote a set of six romances, and this was number one, The Berserz, which means lullaby, or cradle song, as it was called by Apollon Makov. And he dedicated it, in particular, to the wife of fellow Russian romantic composer, Nikolai Rimsky-Korsakov, because his wife was 24 years old at the time and expecting her first baby. So, you know, this was a dedication to a baby to fall asleep with. But, as you are about to hear, it is not one's typical lullaby. It is not very simple and soothing. I mean, it does have many elements of calm and serenity, but it also has an extreme sense of foreboding and tragedy to it, which really permeates in general throughout Tchaikovsky's work. And I think that's the reason that Rachmaninoff identified this song in particular as one that he really liked. He used to perform as an encore his own arrangement of this lullaby by Tchaikovsky, Opus 16, number one, even before he had written it down. And 
Tchaikovsky and another renowned pianist of the time, Pavel Pabst, they had written their own arrangements. Tchaikovsky actually in two different keys for the performer's preference and ease of playing. But it was really Rachmaninoff's arrangement which brought this piece to the knowledge of pianists and musicians in general today. Actually, by the time he came to write it down, it was 1941. And it is believed to be the last thing Rachmaninoff ever wrote. And he then made a recording of it in 1942, one of his last ever recordings because he passed away in 1943. So to me, it's quite interesting that a work which is designed to be really simple and lull babies to sleep conjures so many images of so much grief in a sense. And it, it is almost ironic that for Rachmaninoff, composing this was one of his final gestures in life, when a piece such as a lullaby is meant to be one of the first things that a newborn baby hears when they enter the world. Especially considering that Tchaikovsky dedicated his original song to Rimsky-Korsakov's unborn child. Rachmaninoff's transcription thus evokes the cycle of life. As his musical genius was departing the world, he left something unique to inspire the musical minds of incoming generations. It's also notable that this is the only work Rachmaninoff ever wrote in A-flat minor, which consists of seven flats and is a very tragic, soul-crushing key. So I'm about to play it for you and I want you to listen to the way that Rachmaninoff really emulated his great forebear, Tchaikovsky. Actually, it's important to know that Rachmaninoff really looked up to Tchaikovsky, so much so that when he went to live in Rome, he made a point of living in the same dwelling that Tchaikovsky had stayed in when he too visited Rome, in order to gain inspiration, supposedly. And you can hear throughout, you can hear more of Rachmaninoff's influences coming in. With the sound of bells in the inner voice, this appears twice throughout the piece. It just kind of creeps in amidst those low registers. Actually, the sounds of the church bells of Moscow feature all throughout Rachmaninoff's music. And you can also hear the rocking of the sleeping baby through peacefully repeated phrase markings at the beginning of the piece. And then the third stanza of the poem, which I read to you, which is spoken from the perspective of the wind, you can hear that when the music, when the main theme comes back in triplets and it is in a high register and these very soft whispering triplets really helps the listener to imagine the wind rustling through the trees. But it is also, again, it is filled with this perpetual sense of tragedy and longing. So I'd listen to the swaying phrase markings at the beginning, the appearance of the Moscow church bells and the inner voices and the whispering triplets towards the end of the piece when you listen to me perform this now. I really want to thank Natalie Nedvetsky for putting this entire online event together and for giving me the opportunity to share this beautiful piece with you. And thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoy it. Mm -hmm. 